I'm recording on my end. I'm also recording on my end. That's how, how right. making a podcast works. Did you know that like we have to both record on our, our ends? Have you ever thought this? Power for the Girls is fantastic, but so is SpongeBob. Or maybe you thought this. But, but okay, let's say you and I were to do it just for humor purposes, right? Like my wife knowing and everything. Or maybe even this ran through your head. Back in my day, we listened to things like In Sync were the boy bands and Backstreet Boys. <laughs> If so, then Forget Being Cool might be for you. You can find it Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on the Dayspace YouTube channel and Twitch channel, and directly afterwards on iTunes, Google Play, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Forget Being Cool. You're watching or listening to Forget Being Cool. We discuss the things you like. It's the Forget Being Cool podcast for May 18th, 2020. I'm your host, Dave Moore. On this show, we discuss whatever we want. Joining me is my co-host, my main man, my man on the internet. He's as much a host as I am, Johnny underscore Casino. So, so Dave, I have way too much to start this with. And, and okay, so let me why, go why, Wait, hold, first of all, why are okay. you playing old commercials for this show? So here's the thing, Dave. Uh, I forgot I had it. This was back when the Mega Dads were going to be running like th- promotions for other shows, mm-hmm. and I don't think very many people sent them in. But I made that and sent it to them, mm-hmm. and so I just found it and I thought it was hilarious. So I played it, and then the intro music. So that's one. Two. Can, hold on. W- hold on. Okay. Okay. While while we're on the subject of this old commercial, sure. Can, can I just say that I am extremely pissed in 2020 that there's a day space joke in a video game <laughs> that makes perfect sense and now the name isn't as shitty as it was for two decades <laughs> okay uh, sorry sorry that was it i just wanted to get that out while we're talking about that okay yeah no that's that's fair um so also you know you point out that as much of a host i was thinking about this like you bring in the show and you bring out the show but i'm usually the one who moves the show throughout the middle of it uh-huh no, you and I are I like good, you and I are a good combo. Yeah, I, I, this is a personal preference of mine, and, and and you know, people can feel free to disagree with me on Twitter all they want. But like, the idea of a co-host has never really been a thing to me. Like, I I feel like it's a belittling term. Like, we're well, both. Wouldn't we both be co-hosts? Right. Like you and I. Like the way that I would use that term is you and I are co-hosts of each other. But sure, like sure. you are not the co-host of the Forget Being Cool podcast. You are one of the two hosts of the Forget Being Cool podcast. When I talk, you're my co-host. When you talk, I'm your co-host. Does that make sense? So we we are the two co-hosts. Yes. Can we name the show co-hosts? No. No, um, and no, we can't make a segment out of it, John, because that's stupid. Okay, we could, I, I we, will, we could I will do, forfeit that one. We could do this bit at the beginning of every show, though. We could just talk about how much like each of us contributes to the show, and we could just thank each other for like 10 minutes about how great the other one is. I'm okay with that. Dave, <laughs> Dave okay. I have to tell you the other thing that I was going to open everything up with oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that I am having a fantastic day, which is weird because we're still in isolation. I haven't left my house. Like I didn't even go for a walk today because it was gloomy earlier, although now it is gorgeous outside all of a sudden. Here's the thing, though. Mm. I cooked a great dinner. My daughter helped me. We had a good time. We were rocking out to the Foo Fighters and, and cooking this like – we were cooking for like an hour and a half straight. Okay. Um, but it was it was great. It was fun. Uh, I've, I've gotten some stuff done. I have this like shelf that I moved from a different room into here, and I have like a Star Fox shelf and this like Pikmin shelf and a F-Zero Metroid shelf and like all these different shelves for different video games like displayed up here. Can you say that these stuff. shelves will be forgotten? No, because they're right in front of my face, and I love them. Here's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Sterling, that stupid freaking eagle who has been with me on my island since day one, finally said he's going to leave. Good for you, Sean. And it made my day. I've been trying to get rid of this eagle for like a month. Yeah. And he's gone, and I get to go hunting for a new villager, and I want like a dog probably if I can find one. Just find Goldie. But, is that the, uh, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. There's a few that I'm open to. There's a few that I'm open to, but I really want a dog. So my wife has a cat and I really want a dog. So, and two of my villagers got in a fight. One villager got in a fight with two other villagers in this period of like five minutes. And one of the villagers, my favorite villager was steaming mad, like thing above his head, 
for like three minutes just pissed off at this other villager. That happened when uh, Rachel put out a pitfall seed for me to dig up so I can get the recipe, and one of our villagers <laughs> fell into it. <laughs> and she was just like, I am so angry right now! <laughs> uh, that's amazing. That's um, good. Dave, but anyways, so overall, pretty good mood right now, which is good. That's that's good. I we have a you know, we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. It, it's my Monday today. I know that everybody's listening to this on Monday. Like I get that, but the, like my Monday was today. So so it, I'm having one of those Mondays. What what's, what sitcom is that? You having the Mondays? Is that a thing? This is a dumb show. Oh oh oh! What was it like? Oh, it looks like someone has a case it's of the, the Mondays. Mondays. Is this Office Space? This can't be Office Space. It, I think it was office space. Okay, it yeah. seems like office space. <laughs> it does, but it also could have just been some no, other show. No, it's definitely it's definitely office space is the is the one I think that gets referenced for that line. It could be other places. Uh, so did you see your schedule and find out that you're still not working the regular hours? Congratulations, we have one more week of this show. <laughs> yeah. You ever feel like it's like congratulations, you will you will live for another week. Yeah, but, but we I don't know I, what's going to happen. I keep looking at like Memorial Day going. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do there. the The positive of that is I'm off Memorial Day, guaranteed. So at yeah. least like that Sunday night, I know we can record. Oh, and, that's good. And we can always come on on that Monday morning. You'd be like, "Happy Memorial Day, everybody! This is the last episode of Forget Being Cool in this form." <laughs> and it will get memorialized. Yes. Um, Although is this ep- is this episode ninety nine or a hundred? This is episode 100, Dave. Oh, my God. It's like anybody episode... actually cared. It took us, like, what, five years to get here? It's the funny thing is it took us the appropriate amount of time to get from episode one to episode 100, except for we had, like, a year and a half off in the middle. And except, and it's not because if it were a weekly show. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It would still be two years. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, Dave. Yeah, uh, you you put out a thing on Twitter. They got a lot of people telling us things. Uh, hey guys, but... I, I just I just want to establish something here. When I put that tweet out and tag all of you in it, I'm asking for like good things to talk about, not not uh, making me feel stupid for not knowing pop culture. Thanks, Adam. Um, you know, real questions, the hard hitting I... stuff. Okay, Do you guys want okay. us to talk about the COVID? This is where to ask it. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to talk about that. Dave, Dave. Okay, so first of all, I have something I want to get into before we start addressing any of these questions, because I think there are some interesting ones in there, and even even Adam's. I love Adam's question. But I need to address one thing about Adam's question. So so I, I, I always find it funny when someone asks a question to a podcast, mm-hmm. someone else who follows them answers the question which is fine which is fine like there's no reason why a a billion people couldn't jump on and answer that question but it's still like weird it's like this question is being asked to these people but then these people will jump in so i won't name names but anyone who looks at twitter will just see this so someone out there answered this question with like prince and michael jackson and i cannot remember who else five extremely famous people Mm. so my response as i'm sitting there drinking my i don't know how many beer was oh man that would be awesome if I had any idea who those people were, right? <laughs> yeah. Making a stupid comment to which to which the person's response was, oh you must know who Michael Jackson is, and it's like okay so a couple things and this is fine and this is fine and I just message, huh? It's great because if they had listened to this show, <laughs> like it all goes full circle like it. I I messaged Adam right away and I was like, okay, I learned a couple things just now. This person doesn't listen to forget being cool, which is fine. I did not expect that this person listened. Like there was no thought in my mind that this specific person, and I know who he is. I don't know him, but I know who he is. No, no, no reason why I think any reason this guy was going to listen to the show. It's fine. I don't care. That that doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. But also this guy thinks I'm an idiot. Like, (laughs) like born and lived under a rock for my entire life. Right. Like to not know who there's no one, Dave. Even you know who Michael Jackson is. Yes, even I know, which is the proof. Um, oh god. Okay, so before I allow us to get into those questions, I, I did, uh, I, I did get a couple of messages on Twitter. Okay. Um, I got two messages, direct messages that voted on the name of the show. Okay, I did not get uh, these. Well, why am, no, that's what they, they came directly to me. Why am I being the left problem out? Is, um, cause I mean, hmm. 
Well, one of them was from Andy. So Andy voted. Hey, Andy. Andy, hey, hey, hold on. Hold on. Hey, Andy. <laughs> we have a text message. We have a, we have a the group. Three of us. Yeah, we have, we have a group chat between the three of us. Hello? Okay, sorry. I just wanted to. Okay. So, so Andy voted that it should be called Forgiving Cool Segments. All right. And that the, the funny or not, who knows, should just be a segment. Now, Business Builder. Okay. Who. You apparently know who this is. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I should know who this is, but I've looked through the Twitter and I cannot figure it out. That's so okay. business builder, good on you. Maybe let me know who you are because I'm just feeling kind of dumb right now. It's fine. You probably don't get it. It's fine. But business builders <laughs> said it's... that it should be called um uh, I think I think he wanted he thinks we should go with the funny or not who knows. Okay. Um, so because he thinks people might not understand. And then I think we got one message somewhere in here and it, I was in there cooking, I was drinking and my daughter and I were dancing to music while we were cooking. Uh huh. She was in a kind of a, a rough mood earlier and, and then we were having a lot of fun. So all of a sudden my watch is like going off like crazy as these like responses to your tweet start going off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think someone else in here voted, um, to change the name so okay. i think that's two against one right now see i think funny or not who knows is a good name for what the show ends up kind of being yeah well okay so brent robinson mm -hmm. is the one who thinks that we should change it uh to not the not the one where johnny says segments like the tool saying is that legal in phantom menace that's the way he put it so thank you, Brent. So, uh, funny or not, who knows? Seems to be currently winning this. I, I think it's a better name. Okay. Now here's the last thing. Uh huh. It's still part. Uh, it's still part of forget being cool at that point. Everybody just you know. Yeah, it's forget being cool presents. Yeah. <laughs> funny or not, who knows? The podcast colon <laughs> colon. Please listen. Yeah. Um. So a a segment title was sent to me and i think it's a good one okay. and i think we need to figure out what this is going to be we don't have to necessarily figure out right this second we okay. got to figure out this is this is from sean capri the one and only okay he said segment name bye or buh bye <laughs> i think that is genius bye or buh bye so is this theory, is this really different than more pop less flop though um see i see where you're going here but I think that buy or buh buy could be where a product is brought before us. One of us brings it. You, like maybe you, maybe kind of like we were talking about uh, a segment where you just try to convince me to buy something. Yes. Maybe this is it, right? right? Like maybe this is this is like how it evolves. So you bring a thing, and by the end of it, I gotta say I'm buying that or buh buy. Okay, got it, got it. It's a salesman segment. Where I try yeah. to sell John stuff that he'll want, and and the secret to that segment is finding things that I think you'll legitimately want. Yeah, but but something that I wouldn't necessarily either search for myself, right, or something that like I would see and be like, oh, that's cool, and keep going, right, something like that, right. And by the end of it, like you had, you win, and and there's not too many of these where it's like you against me, and this one's not really you against me. This is like you against you. It's it's me against your wallet. Yeah, I guess. But by the end of it, you win if I hit that buy button while we're recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or at least put it in my cart. No, no, no. I think I have to purchase no, it I think you while have to recording. No, I think you have to purchase it while recording. I think that's yeah. definitely important. It, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be on Amazon, like, shipped before the end of the recording so that you can't cancel the order. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's that's hard to, that's hard to make happen, but... Um, then mm -hmm. when it shows up, we need a review segment that would always follow a thing. Like it would follow every time I actually purchase one of these things. Like yeah, we, we need a review segment. We call that. that segment. Bye bye. <laughs> we can't call it. Bye bye bye. We could call it. Bye bye bye. Do you think we could play like a little bit of that Britney Spears song right there? I, and not, I think, and I like think if, we, get... if we played that like two seconds, that is bye-bye-bye, you know, just that, I think we'd be good. How about we just play you singing that segment? 
We'll call it Dave Karaoke. Got it. Got it. That's definitely something everybody <laughs> wants. Dave Karaoke. It would still be better than that musical episode of that 70s show. Oh, God. I, I can only imagine. Oh, Dave, I have started watching um, or re-watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine because we fell off it like a year or so ago. And I want to get caught back up. So we're starting at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I'm laughing so hard. Like there are times I'm like in tears laughing at that show. Well, that's good. That's just, that's the kind of TV we need right now, everybody. Yes, Brooklyn Nine Nine is amazing, and Andre. So the whole cast is amazing, but we just got done watching Homicide, and Andre Bauer is in that, and he's also in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, many years later, so good. So uh, I watched Scoob. Speaking of watching things, oh, how was it? I don't know how to feel about this. You know, you ever watch something and slightly think... turned on? No, John. No, Thelma? that's no Thelma. No, that's weird, John. Okay, sorry, the blonde. Scooby? <laughs> um, anyway, John, uh, you ever watch something and then like go watch the internet's like breakdown of what they think of it? No. And you're, and you're like, I don't know if I feel the same way anymore. Although, I think for a kid's movie, in the space that it is, it is definitely one of the better ones. But, okay, it, so, but, it, but it is not one of the greatest animated, animated movies of all time. Like, of Warner Brothers, Animation Studios, it is no Lego movie. Okay, hold on a second. We need to get some, we need to get some, um, an idea of where you're coming from. Did you watch the cartoon as a kid? Yes, tons of it. Tons of okay. Scooby-Doo as a kid. Did, did, you, did you watch the Freddie Prince Jr. Sarah Michelle Gellar movie back in the day? Is that the live action one? Yeah, we're Freddie Prince Jr. and Sarah Michelle Gellar uh, and a couple other people now, who were somewhat now, famous played. Uh, Matthew Gillard, I believe, played um, played Shaggy. Okay. And I, Thelma was played by someone else who I think was pretty hot normally, and I cannot remember who it was now. Okay, if this is that live action one from when I was a kid and none of these actors or actresses are relevant to my era of... You, oh, Freddie Prince Jr.? No, John. Sarah you're, Michelle you're, Geller? You're welcome, Adam. This is for you, Adam. Have you ever seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I have not. I've never watched Buffy. Okay, well, okay, so Buffy the Vampire Slayer was Sarah Michelle Geller, and I believe she played the hot girl in the Scooby movie. Um, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. was like a teen heartthrob type yeah, person totally from sounds... like the 90s and all that stuff. Do, yeah, I, I would yeah, name a number of movies, but I can't remember specifically being, which ones are him. Being born in 1992, I was really concerned about who was the uh, the heartthrob. Do you want you want to know my favorite? Okay, so I'm not a, a Freddie Prince Jr. fan in general. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's a decent guy or whatever else. But it, it, the movies he was in were not my kind of movies. But my favorite thing he's ever been in was he was in Boston Legal, which is one of my f- all-time favorite TV shows. And he played... Uh, uh, oh God, I cannot remember that the name of the guy now is slipping my mind, but he played like one of the main guys son and it was hilarious and he showed up off and on throughout the series as his son and it was amazing. Um, Matthew Gillard. God, what was Matthew Gillard in? Was he in dude? Where's my car? Maybe he was in this. He currently he's in the show. Uh, good girls is the, the current TV show he's That's in. Not a show I'm watching, John. Point, uh, point, 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 good. point of that that Scooby Doo movie, that live action Scooby Doo movie, what we were talking about five seconds ago. Yeah, uh, it's not a good movie. Not a, oh, no, not, it's not, not a good movie. None of them, none of them were good. But I've seen them. <laughs> well, was, was there more than one live action one? I think they made three of them. Seriously? Yes. I'm actually looking this up as we talk. <laughs> so Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo Two. Uh huh. And I think they made a third one. Like, um, uh, I don't like see another one that it's showing years ago, but what do I know? I'm not seeing another one that shows the same, the same people in it. Um, I'm um, also one of the weird people who liked a pup named Scooby-Doo. The cartoon? Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that was good. Oh, Linda, uh, Cardellini played Velma and I kept calling her Thelma earlier. I apologize. It's Velma. She is known for a number of things that you would know her uh, from. You watch Dead to Me. Dead to Me is really good. It's a nope. Netflix show, I believe. Nope. Dead to Me. Is... Oh, it's so good. The second season just came out. She was in Avengers Endgame. As who? 
Um, Laura Barton. Okay. Don't ask. She was in Bloodline. Did you watch Bloodline? Bloodline was really good too. Yeah. Sounds uh, like she's in a lot did, of. Did you? Sounds like she's in a lot of good Gravity stuff. Gravity Falls. No, Gravity Falls sucks. What? Uh, uh, you're killing me here. I'm trying to find like what you would know her from because I know her from like one of her very first things. She, funny enough, she was in Super, which is one of my favorite movies. She was in ER for 126 episodes. Yeah, John, definitely watching ER on a regular basis. Point at this story. Now that movie sucks, John. Oh yeah, it was not good. Uh, so yes, I've seen it, but no, it sucked. Oh, both of them. Uh this this movie is better than both those combined. I mean, I it's it's hard to not be. I liked it, John. I I, I like to see it at some point. I liked it. I think people should watch it. I think if there's kids who need things to do with their homes, right now, it's definitely worth the twenty five bucks. Okay, I like that. Oh, you know, if there's adults that need things to do at their home because they're bored, I have a website to recommend. <laughs> you ready for this? I stumbled across this while looking for something else, waiting for you to get ready to go. Okay. So it's his website. It's called Nine Eyes. It's nine dash e y e s dot com. Okay. And it's called Nine Eyes because the Google car, like the Google uh, Maps car that drives around, has like nine lenses on it. <laughs> and all of this is stuff that people found, like going through Google Maps and like zooming into Street View and just like going down the streets. These are all pictures that people found doing that. And oh my God, some of the things that that Google thing catches in Street View is amazing. Like the number of like people going to the bathroom, um, or there was a there was a car it had both its window or doors open, and there was definitely a woman getting ready to do a bad thing to a man. What? Oh, here here's an interesting one. They drove by some place, and I don't know what country this is, but it's one of those places that has prostitutes, but with the women stand in a window, and you just kind of like walk by and then decide which one you want and go in and pick them. No way. Been... What is this? I... Okay, you mean the prostitute thing? I've been to countries like that. I no, have not no. actually walked down that part. No, I meant I meant the website. This is it's it's called Nine Eyes, and this stuff isn't Nine... getting like blurred out and stuff. They, okay, well they blur out the faces of anyone you see. Right. right automatically. And, and there's no there's no nudity that I've seen. The closest thing I've seen to actual nudity is like a woman breastfeeding, which was kind of funny. Um, I mean, but even that, that's... I mean, it was covered by a, a baby mouth. Right. Um, but, you know, it's still these other like like the, the woman who was about to do dirty things to another to a guy like she was covered like. Anyway, oh here's here's a good one. It's this, this what I'm assuming is a hot woman walking down the street and a guy on a motorcycle just hardcore checking her out. And the and the the Google the Google Street car thing or whatever uh, just caught that perfectly. So check it out. It's nine eyes. Uh, oh, those people might be doing something. Who knows? Uh, check it out. It's quite amusing. There's lots of funny pictures. <laughs> you ever seen? You, you, you ever seen these cars? Uh, a few times. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I've seen them like going too, like where like the cameras are moving and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've driven around them when they're doing that and stuff like that. Um, I've also ran into the Google one and the Apple one in like the same day. Yeah, isn't that kind of weird? It is kind. There was actually one of the pictures the Google car caught the Apple car next to it doing its thing, and that was kind of kind of amusing. Neat. So anyway. Just a little recommendation. If you're bored, go to NineEyes.com, and it is uh, worth a look. I'm very amused. Okay, John. Hi, Dave. Hi, John. Do you want to uh, talk about any of these questions that were asked by people who... Sure. This, this entire show is based on your demands on Twitter. Uh, my demands on Twitter? No, no. These, these people. These people who listen to our private conversation, John. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see here. Let's see here. Um, oh, by the way, Britt Robinson also said you're 100% correct about popcorn. Oh, yes, I did see this. Uh, I am. Although, speaking of these motorized things, that yeah. sounds great. Sounds awesome. But I feel like it takes away 
that like ha- like you know it's just making freaking popcorn it's not you know rocket science or anything you know this isn't like some actual homemade gourmet meal like you were apparently making today yeah but i feel like that takes away like the home cranked like you put effort into this yourself kind of thing yeah okay i just, I just wanted to i just wanted to say i don't think it would be as good doing it that way uh, but it'd be a mental thing yeah, and it would be easier. Yeah, but like, like it wouldn't be as good due to like a mental glitch. Not like it, it like it, you would not be able to put your hand in one and eat some, and tell your hand in the other and eat some, and not know which one's which, and tell the difference. Most likely, probably not. Probably not. Okay. So, from Andy, do you think there's a way slash chance that Nintendo Nintendo could link Animal Crossing New Horizons with the NES slash Super Nintendo apps on the Switch? allow you to collect those games and access them in the original game. Well, okay. John, if we ran Nintendo. <laughs> um, here, here's the reality. Let's, let's just break this down for everybody. In a perfect world where Nintendo does things that make sense, this would happen. And the world we live in where Nintendo does things that make absolutely no sense, like announce a Paper Mario game two months before it comes out with no warning... I'm so excited. Out of nowhere on YouTube in like the crack ass butterly dawn. Okay, so so hold on a second. In their defense, that probably was not their plan, and it probably their plans got shattered by the way everything is going. Uh, I know. But that's the way they did it. Okay. Okay. And in this world where Nintendo does that, fine. I don't think Nintendo in our universe, in our timeline, has the thought or the will to do what they should do, which is build an arcade within Animal Crossing where you have to collect the games and put them into your arcade. And then you so, can and you can duplicate not only this, you can have to collect the games, which just you know, you have access to from the Switch Online app, but you can just, you know, pull them up in Animal Crossing, go to your arcade building. Now, also use Animal Crossing as a like interface to communicate with your friends. Right. Okay. So, so hold on a second. So here's like, there's a few problems, Mm -hmm. right? There are no problems. One, they've already kind of done this in the past games. It was the GameCube one or whatever. They had all these old NES games that you could collect and play. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So they've already done this. Now with what, what Andy is asking is connecting it to this, the Nintendo and Super Nintendo, like things inside the switch that are currently there. Mm -hmm. That, excuse me, that I don't think could ever, ever happen. Because right now, and even not even just Nintendo, but all the consoles, uh, you can't be running two different programs. So when you when you are in uh, Animal okay, Crossing hold, hold. and you go over to the Nintendo one, it closes Animal Crossing. So it it would have to be more like it was on the GameCube one. And I also I worry that with the fidelity of it, like the how uh, the the resolution and all that stuff. Like it potentially be too big and make it too big for oh the cartridge? God. Oh God, please! Jesus Would that not be a thing? No, it's NES and Super Nintendo games are so small and so oh, easy. Trust me, I know. And so easy to emulate. There is there is no technical limitation that exists. This is a personal design choice of Nintendo to do. You're not gonna run. You're not. You'd have to run the Switch Online NES and Super Nintendo apps within Animal Crossing. You're not like yeah. you're in Animal Crossing and then you switch to that app to run it at the same time. It's no, it's got to you've literally got to add that app into Animal Crossing, which is minuscule and tiny anyway, so it really wouldn't that be a, that big of a deal. The coolest thing they could do is allow you to use Animal Crossing with your little avatars and your little guys to, you know, have two players to set up multiple people playing at a time to to use that world the way that so, PlayStation so, Home was designed, if anybody still remembers PlayStation Home. Okay, so Dave, mm-hmm. Dave, you know when K.K. Slatter comes and uh-huh. you go up to him you're like, I want to request a song. This is what mood I'm in, whatever, mm-hmm. right? And he makes you sit down before he starts. And then you stand up? Yeah, and then you stand up. But it'd be funny if to make this work, you had to have a TV, you had to have the system, you had to have found the system, found the TV, and I would say probably find or buy the games. Right. Right. But then, like, you have to sit down on the couch to make it start. Like, that would be hilarious. Yes. There's a lot of things they could do, John. But they won't do so, them. No, well, you know, okay. 
and, we, and, you and, and I have talked about this before. Hold and, on. You and I have talked about this before where the only thing I want is I want my Nintendo collectibles. And don't get me wrong. My house is way too full. I have so many musical instruments. I have four guitars that <laughs> all look different. I have Now I have two drum sets that are different colors. I have a, a keyboard, a grand piano, I a xylophone. Not, oh, I need a grand piano. I might be able to send you one. Uh, they're expensive, but I'll say, I'll just send it to you. Uh-huh. I'm that nice of a guy. Uh, you're gonna let uh, me. You're gonna let me come bring my like two and a half pockets worth of turnips to your island too, right? Yeah, I bought seven and a half pockets worth of turnips today. Thirty thousand turnips. <laughs> um. Uh, anyways, I have my my xylophone, <laughs> and I have uh, something else. I'm still missing a couple of instruments that I just haven't been able to find yet. But anyways, I, and then my arcade, because of stuff you've sent me and I've gotten and other people sent me, my arcade is overly full. So, I'm going to have to move my arcade and my music studio outside. But this all goes back to me saying I want to collect Nintendo collectibles like I could in New Leaf. It was awesome. I want to play was, the damn arcade games. I, 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 yeah, I want to do that too. But I want to collect that Nintendo stuff. Nintendo, now supposedly they are they are keeping they're keeping up with this game for three years or whatever. That's what I've heard people say. I haven't heard Nintendo say it, but I wasn't paying attention. They have to do this at some point. They have to do something. And and it, it should be that eventually you can find an NES and a Super Nintendo and a GameCube. And maybe you can't play games on all of them. Yeah, but how cool would it be if they gave us like a big arcade? And they design, they redesigned cabinets for all these games. And like, at least be able to play Donkey Kong. Right. But but make an arcade. Give me another building. I have an arcade. Give me no. Give me another building. And let me like collect. Like a museum, but for, yes. for old video games. Yes. Like oh my the... god, that would be amazing. Yes, John, that would be amazing. But Nintendo will never give it to us because that would be too cool. Dave, I don't know. I I am every day. I'm excited, and this is this is legit. Every day I wake up. And I'm excited to see what falls out of the tree when I shake it. I right? know, John. Like the two, my two items. I, every time a balloon goes by, I'm excited to see what the balloon is. You know, uh, now that I get a new villager, like I had a guy in my campsite today, and I was excited to see who was in my campsite. I've had a lot of people in my campsite, which is kind of amazing. I don't get it a was lot someone of camp- who I, I don't get a lot of campers. I, I've gotten an unusual, I think I've gotten an unusual high amount of campers. But, have, you, have you seen my campsite? Have you seen what I've done to remodel it? Not in a while. Oh, you need to come see my island. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'll do I that. Be- I'm, I also I'm built- getting close to being done with mine. I built a gas station because I had nice. like four different retro gas pumps. Jesus. But but every day I'm excited about something in that game, right? Mm-hmm. Now, every month, new fish are there. Some fish are gone. New bugs are there. Some bugs are gone. So every month, to the beginning of the month, I'm excited. Like, I'm legit excited. Right. How excited update, would you be? Though, if you could when they get do an update games, oh, I know, <laughs> I know, Dave. It's it it's the perfect thing to give us to collect. Yes, and I love collecting things in this. When it's like National Arcade Day, I I mean I'm I don't know I don't think it's an official holiday. I yeah, but it's like National Museum Day, a real holiday. No, Secretary Day. <laughs> <laughs> National Clerk's Day. Oh wait, that's not happening yet. I don't, okay. Um. Uh. Anyways, Andy, it is possible. I don't think it's likely, but I really, really, really hope that they will do something. Yeah. No. Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't like us enough in this universe to give us that. There is a universe in which there's an arcade where you collect the games. Like and and because think how cool it would be if Nintendo like redesigned arcade cabinets for games that weren't actually cabinets. Yeah, it would be so cool, Dave. That's what I want. As playing this game, being a game that you've never played before. Mm. <sighs> serious, Yawning, serious. Of course. I played newly for like ten minutes. Was like hell no. This is too much reading on a damn 3ds. That is how I felt at first, and then I got real big into newly right before. I probably put 40 hours into it um, in, a, in a few weeks. Nothing like what I've done now. No. Anyway, so does it make you want to go back and either play some of the older ones, which I think is kind of tough to do because they're different and their graphics are worse, stuff like that, or does it make you want to go back and play a game like, um, oh, what's that farming simulator game? 
Yes, like Harvest Moon or anything like that. I, Does it make you want to go back and do those things? It it keeps making me think I want to go back to the GameCube Animal Crossing, and then I look at it and go, oh my god, that game is ugly as shit. <laughs> and that doesn't bother me. It, it wouldn't normally bother me, except this is such a slow-paced game where basically all it is, the fun of it is finding new stuff to look at and everything I find will be ugly and stupid. And I can play NES games in SD. No, thanks. You know what I mean? And so I, and, I, and then, to, it... and so I pulled New Leaf out off the shelf because I have it. Yeah. And I was like, I should play this. And then I like looked at the box for me and I was like, Nah, I shouldn't play this. And I played Pocket so, I played Pocket Camp only to get those items, right? And I like they, Pocket Camp is the most disgusting, ugly looking game in the world. I, so it makes me want another game like this, but I don't have one that I feel like will meet the quality that I think this one is. Okay, so every once in a while, and for a while I was doing it every day, starting about a week ago, so I did like three days and then stopped. But I was going back into New Leaf. And just going, buying the two fortune cookies. Like, I would literally turn my 3DS on, put it in my pocket so I could walk around, so I could get the Nintendo coins and build up just walking around with that thing in your pocket. And I'd go into New Leaf, and I'd buy my two fortune cookies. And if anything else, I'd buy it right then, like a new hat or something like that, maybe. And I'd open it up, see what new Nintendo item, because that's how you get, like, the Nintendo collectible-type items, is from the fortune cookies. Mm -hmm. See if I got something new. I got, like, three we used three days in a row. And then I would go put it in my house and I would turn the game off, right? Also, I did discover that Renee, who I had in my New Horizon game, was also my New Leaf game, but it also just left. And Ed, who you have, I have in my New Leaf game. Anyway, so so I was doing that for a while. And I want to go back to it just because I just, I just want to build up that Nintendo collection. Now, if I had the GameCube one, and if I had a memory card that could support it, which I, I would consider putting some time into that because it would be different. But there are some mechanics that are going to feel old. That's my problem with all of it, John. But if I'm able to collect some really awesome Nintendo stuff in it, worth it. I like New Horizons so much that nothing they do in the older games will satisfy me now on a, on a gameplay level and so trust me every time a tool breaks i muddle a curse word under my breath mumble yeah, yeah. it's it's funny when they when they break i was, I was watching amy play earlier and it, the thing breaks so this tool is in your hand and like poofs into dust <laughs> yeah they do not look as freaked out as you should when that would happen in real life like they do not look freaked out enough no you should definitely be scareder when that happens yeah um okay do you enjoy though the shaking the trees the planting the fruit trees doing all that stuff i do although i will tell you that rachel ch- shakes all the trees six days of the week so <laughs> yeah i figured um, so okay. it, but if she gets anything cool that would be like you know something I'd want. She just drops it by my house. So it's fine. So, so it makes I don't... me wonder though, mm-hmm. if you enjoy that aspect of it, maybe the new harvest moon you would also enjoy. I saw that we're getting a new harvest moon. Isn't it like a spin off game though? It's not like a real I, I, harvest moon from look I don't know. I, I don't know either. Hey hey internet, guess what? We're on a podcast turns out we don't know things should it be a segment john should it be a segment we don't know things i mean that, we'd ha- we, we, the we, hard we, part no, would be all figuring we, out how to make it work no here's here's what we do okay we go to reddit and we just search for rumors and we discuss whether they're a thing like or not a and they could be a random rumor yeah random rumor and pretend like we know that it's happening now, do we discuss it in a way like we think it's actually real and we don't, we're don't? we not playing it up as a rumor? Or do we just pretend to have any idea what we're talking about talking about this rumor? I think we pretend to know what we're talking about. 
Okay, but we, we're still acknowledging it's just a rumor. Uh, yes, because lying to people is cruel. These people, <laughs> these people who, these people who think we're getting, you know, a, a all, Super Mario okay. All Stars 3D collection. Oh God, we better be. You're, man. You're, we better be. I'll tell you, we better be now that they've basically confirmed it, and the world thinks we're getting it. Yet I don't believe it for five seconds. Can you imagine, Dave, if this wasn't a podcast, mm-hmm. this was an actual radio show, like mm-hmm. live on the air, mm-hmm. and there we are doing this segment about, you know, some rumor mm-hmm. that we know absolutely nothing about, and we're pretending like it's real, and we're pretending like we have any idea what we're talking about, and some random person just turns the dial and, like, dials into that? Yeah. And now, now they think this thing is real, being spoken about by experts, Right, but it's just us schlubs. Uh huh. Mm, can we call the podcast "Us Schlubs"? That's not a bad name. I mean, it's probably not great. I don't really know how you spell schlubs. I would guess S C H L U B S. Maybe two Bs. I'm not sure. See, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, one B or two? That's the question. Can we make a Can we make a segment <laughs> called "One B or Two? That's the question. We could discuss a couple things. We could discuss we could discuss two options here. Mm-hmm. Option one is words that might have a double B in them that we just don't know. Okay. The other option is two people so in I... a disagreement. Hold on. Two people in a disagreement. One of them is for sure being a B, right? <laughs> but is the other one being a B? We don't know. We have to decide. Two Bs are one. Who knows? <laughs> I like I like the dictionary. I pick out a random word out of the dictionary that might have two B's in it and see if you can spell it. <laughs> <laughs> and then can we discuss whether or not the two people arguing are both B's or just one of them is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome, thanks, John. Dave. Oh, Dave. You know what I'm staring at right now? What's that, Jeff? Mario sh- Strikers charged the Wii version. And man, I wish so bad it was the GameCube version. You know what I'm craving? What's that? Mario Golf. I have, I was going through, so I, I brought all my retro games downstairs to my office now that I have all my systems down here. And so I have like um, the the GameCube Mario Golf game sitting over here and it's still so much fun. We never got a Wii U Mario Golf, did we? You know, I want to say no, but I cannot tell you that for sure. No, we didn't. We got a 3DS one. Which was good, and I actually have that one. I didn't buy it. I never bought it. I bought it late because a bunch of people were going to be doing like, was, these little tournaments in it. I was going to say there was that big tournament thing, and I was going to buy it, and then I just didn't end up buying it. I think I've decided that my uh, retro game collecting, I'm going to start moving to where I'm um, going after specific titles. So I, you know, um, so I was looking at eBay, John, because that's, okay. that's the thing I do right now. And I was looking for Mario Golf. This is actually why this came up. Which Mario Golf were you looking for? Mario Kart or Mario Golf sixty four? Oh, but I think I have that too. I, I know I've played a shit ton of it. I have the GameCube one. I like the GameCube one the best. But I was looking at the N sixty four one, and what came up next to it was an entire complete set of every N sixty four game, ever. Oh, how much? For $9,999. Now, yeah. right next to that. Did it say or best offer? It did. And okay. then, so then I looked for the next one, right? The one next to it. And it was all the all 296 North American released N64 games for a total of $6,000 or best offer. And part of my stomach said, God, if I had $6,000 to waste, I would do that. <laughs> Can you imagine, though, you'd have to go through each one of those and test them in a timely manner? True. So so my gut reaction, John, was I'd really like to have that, right? Because wouldn't we love to have a complete set of any console game? Sure. If, if I could have the sure. complete set for any console, it'd be the PS2 because it has well, the it, largest I... and the best catalog, period. So, um, So the easiest one I hear to collect for, though except for some of them were kind of hard to find now, is like the Wii U, because yeah. the catalog was kind of small. Yeah, no, that's a lot of people I have heard have the entire Wii U catalog, and it yeah. almost makes me sad because I bought so much crap for the Wii U, 
and now there's nothing to play on it that I can't get on something else except, you know, 3D World, which is going to be on the Switch at any point, according to this stupid rumor. Dave, Dave, yeah. Dave, I'm going to let you finish your story, but I, you cannot let me forget the most important thing I was going to tell you this time, and that reminded me right there. Okay. Don't okay. forget it, John. I don't know what okay. it is, but don't forget it. Um, okay. So I, I thought about that like six thousand dollars, and I realized like in my head this is my this is my like justification to myself. I'm yeah. like, well, if that's the value of the entire N sixty four North American catalog, what if I just like committed to completing that over the next like five years? Like then it's not that big of a deal. So so wait, you're saying the N sixty four catalog? Yeah. So the problem is, is there are some games that are very expensive and some games that are hard to find. Right. That right. Was... And that's where you're going to get your ass kicked. Yeah, but if I spent six thousand dollars over the course of, I, I mean, look, I don't, I don't have a ton of money. This sounds like I have tons and tons of money, but I don't. But to spend six thousand dollars over the course of, you know, years, years and years, it's not that big of a deal. No, no, it's it maybe not. Um, here, here's the two things I'll say. So one, the the way I'm going to go about it for a while is I'm going to get specific games that I want to complete series that I have. Yeah, that's right. That's, like that's like, usually how I collect games. Like, like I, I have all the Pikmin games. I have a bunch of Metro. I have all the Metroid Prime games. I need to collect the older Metroid games, which I actually like better than the Prime games. Anyway, I have Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door, and I'm gonna I, I pre-ordered the new one today. So now I need the Wii U and the Wii versions. Um, I have some of these Mario sports titles, but I need to collect the other ones. The other thing I look for is like oddly, um, like Disney licensed games, like, uh, oh, I just put it away. It's not over here. But like these Donald duck games for some reason, I just like owning the shit that drives me nuts is when like, I want, you know, like I'd like to complete my Mario Kart collection because I have every Mario Kart oh, game except yeah, for 64 si- and it's goddamn $70. Yeah, that's the one I'm missing, and I will I will have it at some point. I don't know I, when. But, I will so too, here, but but it's like every store I'm going to go into, and I'm just going to find it one of these days. Like it's just still on a shelf with a lower price tag, like what it used to be worth, like forty something dollars. And I'll be like, all right, that's that's it. It's time, right? So so here here's the other thing that I tell you is I've talked to some people who have collected like complete like console games, mm. and afterwards they're like, well, now what? Right, like, like you think you have this sense of accomplishment, and you do for about five minutes, and then you're like, "Okay, well, damn, now what?" <laughs> yeah, uh, right. So that's so, the problem. So, so as I, you know, talked myself out of that because spending that amount of money on this is stupid. Sure. Um, what I want, and if somebody has this, please email it to me. I want a spreadsheet. Of, like, every classic console and every single game of, like, official Northeast releases. And I want it with checkboxes, or I can add the checkbox columns or whatever, to be like, I want it, I have it, right? So, and, and so, so that I can make a list, and then I can add prices of what I've seen it for, you know, into these columns, and, like, go for real, and then go through the list of the games on these consoles and then mark the ones that I actually want. Right? Like, I don't so, give a shit about Madden 2001 for the N64, but it exists and it's a dollar. Okay. Okay. So there's a video game monthly subscription box that you can buy. All right. You can get. Yeah. We talked about this. Joe. I think we, it's we did a show three... where we talked about this a lot. You got it for a while. Yeah. I got it. I got like one month. I, I've been considering getting it again, mm-hmm. but like being a lot more specific on what I want. But here's what, here's why I bring this up is that on their thing, you make an account with them. I don't know if you have to buy this stuff or not or whatever, but you can go into your account on there and you can mark down what you have and it, you can like check off the boxes. And I think they have every single game for all these different systems on there. Right now. I don't know if you can do it without actually like signing up for the service, but I, I mean, all I want then is like, I, I want to be able to, and, whether they're going to send them to me or not, even if I paid a subscription for this, I'd love a subscription like that. That'd be the funnest thing in the world for me to open Just to up, get a, get a, a box every a, month, get a box of random games. Like it, I, it's like $40 or $45 for 
but, for five but, games. But see, doesn't that like hurt you though? Like you're like, yeah, but if I just spent sixty a month on the one game that I really wanted, wouldn't I be happier with the see, one and, game and, that I actually want? So I, I've debated this, right? Because part of me thinks yes, and part of me's like, but then you don't get that excitement of opening it up. But then you also don't get that disappointment of what's inside if you're not happy. Right. You know? So I don't know. I'm debating it. I might try it for a month or two. Isn't it um, like three hundred dollars for like a year? So it, it, you know, the, I you when know, I looked at it this time, it did not have a year option. Otherwise, I would just do it. I'd be like, for Father's Day, get me this for one year. If if the if our president keeps giving us uh stimulus checks for long enough, maybe I'll consider. <laughs> Dave, yeah, I was can kidding. I tell you that was a joke? Everybody, calm down. I'm not actually considering using my stimulus to get a bunch of random video games. That <laughs> shit goes directly, directly <laughs> to my savings. <laughs> Which, funny enough, is not the point of it. But anyways, I, I, we're not getting into yeah, that. Yeah, well, welcome to the world. I understand. It, oh, I know. It's I know. to help. It's to help the economy. I get it. Except you've put everybody. Oh, oh, oh we've gone. No, no, we've, no. Yeah, we've we're gone not... down a road. You've put no, everybody into such a state of. You put everybody into such a state of like fear that I cannot go. My side can hear it. If you want to hear this, it's on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> uh, you put us into such a state of like panic and fear that we don't want to go out anymore. Therefore, not re-stimulating the economy. Therefore giving everybody this money that's supposed to stimulate the economy is really just being hoarded or put into savings or paying their you know their rent because there's 36 million people out of work right now so sorry okay. internet that this happened on what's supposed to be a fun show but it drives dave, me nuts hi john dave can i go back to something fun and can, tell you can i go well i'm angry can i go into something that's yeah. Oh, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, you said not, you wanted to rant about something. Yeah, hi. So, hi. I have uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 for the N64. Okay. And I was committed to setting up my Elgato and streaming it. Okay? So, okay. the other night, I ran cables all around this room so that I could run cables to the TV that's over there. It's like, you know, like 10 feet that way. Realistically, sure. it's only like 10 feet. But, like to run 50 foot of cable around it like through the ceiling and stuff like it's, it's more than i need but it's enough to get to the point so i ran all that cable hooked it all up and it didn't work and then i spent two hours trying to make it work and i kept getting it to flicker and then i got it all going it was like oh my god it's freaking working and then the tv started flickering it would it would be up for 10 seconds and then it would disappear for 10 and then it would reappear for 10 and then disappear for 10 screw you elgato screw this capture software although i will say in this experiment adding an obs connector for the elgato game capture for mac is a really great update too bad i'll never can use it and i bought this <laughs> oh, damn <laughs> I bought wow. this damn capture card to record like ten minutes of gameplay for one show that John and I did for like three weeks. Okay, sorry, that's it. Just wanted to I let. Need, I need to write down a number here. <laughs> I'm gonna put a Mario sound over that word. <laughs> Thanks, John. I said it in the last episode too, I think, but you didn't cut it out. Uh, I probably didn't. Probably <laughs> didn't, because you know I don't always. Okay. Uh, sorry, I had I had to. Uh... Okay. So... Any, anyway, so. I was going to stream Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 for everybody. Also, complaint about that game while I'm going off. Uh, okay. I have to have one of those stupid controller memory cards to save. Oh, I don't own one and of those. And no one has one of those, and I've never had one. This is the, actually, first, this is the first time that that's actually like, come back to bite me. I, think I you own it. one, and it's broken. It doesn't work. Yeah, well, I don't have a Rumble Pack, but I do have one of those stupid Game Boy players to play Pokemon on the TV. Okay, sorry, that's it. I'm done. My complaints are out. I just wanted to let everybody know I spent two and a half-ish hours trying to set this up so that I could stream for you Tony Hawk Pro Skater so that nobody would watch, and it didn't work. Just wanted to let that out. Okay. Okay. And okay. I might I might do it if I can get it to work. Dave, would you like to hear the greatest thing that I've done lately? And I was so excited that I did it. Oh, yeah, I also spent that time instead of working on my retro pie. That's what I spent time doing, and it was for nothing. Okay, sorry, your turn, John, nice. go. Okay, so my wife has been playing Animal Crossing a lot, uh -huh. right? I've been playing Animal Crossing a lot. I end up playing it in handheld a lot, 
and she will put it on the TV. I'll let her put it on the TV instead of me most of the time. Mm-hmm. And I've also started playing with headphones on, or at least one headphone in, and I'll close my eyes when I'm fishing, and it just it ups my my percent of catching fish so much. Anyway, so she had a complaint though where she was having an issue with one of our Joy Cons, and I knew that I had one Joy Con that was having the drift, and it just started. I don't know oh, uh, a month or so ago. I've and got I've, like, oh, I've son got of a, a bitch. I've got a drifting Joy Con, John. Finally. Okay. Finally. He yeah, just started doing that it. That sounds like something you should get a pill for, Dave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so it's blue. Uh, Sometimes it's red. It depends on the it depends on the on the side though. So so anyway, so she's having this problem. Also a while back, we we plugged in the Wii U to to do something. I don't remember what it was after finally getting it all out after moving, and the left joystick on the Wii U was just not working properly. Yep. Welcome so, to my gamepad. It does it, it. It works ninety eight percent of the time, but there is something wrong about the way the gamepad works, and it's never going to be replaced. And my Wii U is packed up for the rest of eternity. Basically, I Dave, mean, it's Dave, hooked up. Dave, but I can save this for you. Oh yeah, I took apart my Wii U gamepad. <laughs> wow. I I opened it up. I took it apart. I took out both of the joysticks, cleaned them up. I just took the pieces apart and cleaned it up. Cleaned out the dust. It was so much like dust and hair and all kinds of stuff yeah. in there, like dog hair and whatever. I mean, that's all it is. Yeah, I blew it out. I, I cleaned it up. I put it back together. Works perfect. Like, perfect. Now, so, next, t- next time you're in PA and want to come visit me, uh, know what you can yeah. do. I have a whole set of oh. precision electronic screwdrivers. It's probably pretty easy to open up. Oh, well, I, I have the actual Nintendo screwdriver. Like, there's a, So I have a set that's like the little bits that you use to open the, the Nintendo and Super Nintendo cartridges. Yeah. And it turns out it also has a screwdriver. I need to open these. Also, I opened up two left Joy-Cons. You are a brave, brave, well, brave man. So here's my thoughts. Here's my thoughts, Dave. It was having these problems and making it basically unplayable with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had them for too long. I was not going to be able to turn them in. And yeah, get them no. Fixed. I mean, I've had mine right? since launch. These are my launch Joy Cons, everybody. And it's so, not, it's not bad, but it's starting. And I know that I'm going to have to go get ninety dollar whatever Joy Cons, and they're well, not gonna, they're not going to be in not. stock. So maybe I can fix it for you. But I opened it up. I had to watch some videos on like how to get certain parts apart. It was kind of a pain trying to remove some of the wires and get the wires back in. Uh-huh. I took the Joy-Con apart. So there's all these videos back in the day about these drift, and people put this like foam and stuff in there. It's like, oh, but that's not the case. I took the entire joystick contraption apart, all the little pieces, mm-hmm. took them apart, got like uh, uh, alcohol on a Q-tip, and just cleaned all the parts, cleaned everything in there, put it back together, which was a bigger pain in the ass than taking it apart. It's got this like weird clip thing that goes around, like the joystick um, I've, I've watched, like, contraption. I've, I've watched these videos. It's it's a pain. Yeah, it does not look like fun. But, I probably would not do this myself. But I did it to two Joy-Cons because it was... I mean, if they never worked again, then I was well, basically in the same situation. I mean, that's right? That's the only time I'll open an electronic is if it's too late. Like, if if we're at that point where either, oh, yeah. either I'm going to throw it in the trash or I'm going to attempt this. I'm going to attempt it first. Yeah, so yeah. I did... And in one day, this is what I was when I was on the walk and you called me and I was like, I was going to tell you, but I can't tell you yet. This is what it was. I repaired two Joy-Cons and my Wii U gamepad. They all worked great. Put them back together. I was so excited. So, so excited. Is your gamepad like all scratched up? Um, like the not screen? Really. Like it, it just got, no, no, no. no the screen's sc- fine. It just got scuffs on it. It just looks shitty. No, mine, mine's fine. So, so what you're um, telling me is if I... If I get desperate enough, like in this global pandemic that we're in and I can't buy Joy-Cons and my Joy-Cons get to the point where they don't work, you're telling me I can mail them to you and you could fix them and mail them back to me, right? That's that's. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you could get them to me if you could get them to me uh, and I could attempt with no promises, but so far I'm well, at 100% success rate. Well, yeah, but I'd rather spend $15 to mail them to you and have you attempt it then have to go on eBay and fight the people for a new set of Joy-Cons. And these are launch Joy-Cons, everybody. Therefore, anybody who's complaining about this drift being a problem, it's because you played your Switch a lot. Calm down. Sometimes you need to buy new stuff. Hate to break uh, it to the world, 
sometimes you know things yeah, that but, move take wear and tear. I'm not. Still, I'm not like, saying it's okay. I'm saying when now that I've Rachel and I have combined have put in like you know almost 400 hours of Animal Crossing or something ridiculous. Not yeah. to mention everything else I played on my Switch, and I've played plenty of handheld, and we're finally getting to the point where this is a problem. Then you know what? I think I got my money's worth out of those Joy Cons. I've had controllers for much less time. I Dual Shock Fours that I've had for a week, and the buttons okay. stick. Dave, we're we're coming up about this time, but there is a question we have to answer from. From our listener questions here, or I don't know if any of these people listen, but from the Twitter. I, from from the people I tag on Twitter to answer questions for a show they may or may not listen to, yes. Hey, hey, Sean asked a question. He didn't tag him. Um, okay, here's a question we have to answer. I need to know what your answer is, Dave. I hope I you're tagged prepared. Sean. Oh, maybe you did. I hope you're prepared, Dave. Are you ready? Uh-huh. You can go back in time and say four musicians who have since died to form the ultimate music supergroup. Who do you save? What is the name of the group? Also, the drummer for the group is Animal from the Muppets because I say so. Now, I agree. Like when when I was reading this, somehow before I even got to that part, I was like Animal from the Muppets, perfect drummer. Uh, which is funny because as we're recording, people are sitting in things like, "What Muppet died? I don't know if Muppet died." <laughs> um, John Lennon. Okay, because we need somebody who can write music. Like, uh, like have you heard? Have you heard that number nine? Some, uh, something nine. Number nine. It's the White Album. Number nine. Yeah. Number nine. Yeah. Number nine. The number nine. Worst song number ever nine. If you wrote that. Yeah, John. How about listen to the entire rest of the Beatles catalog? Oh, I love the Beatles. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Uh, I absolutely. Uh, love I, the I agree that number nine is a trash track. It um, is such a bad song. But I still, if if we got to bring back somebody from the dead. To lead this band is John Lennon. Like that's okay. not even. That, that's not even. I don't even have to think about that. That's, that's just a guaranteed. So who else you got, John? That's all I got. You didn't give me enough time to think about this. I mean, you've had <laughs> hours, hours. So here's the thing: is I, I was thinking about this earlier, and I was having a real hard time. I mean, I think Kurt Cobain, because there's just something about Kurt Cobain. I can. Uh, the I problem can, is, I is can... like all these people are going to be singers, and it's just going to be called like, we sing. I think that's that might be a Wii game. W I I. Yeah, W I I sing. It's actually a video. They they only sing video game songs from the Wii era. Yeah, especially um, that Wii Shop music. Yes, they sing the Wii Shop music. Uh, he, here's another name though that I would really wish. And this person died kind of recently, and I had to look up her name because I really was not sure her actual name. It's Dolores O'Royd O'Royden. <laughs> It's O apostrophe R I O R D A N. I don't know how to pronounce that, Dave. And there's no know. B's in it. She's the lead singer of the Cranberries. Oh. And she died a few years ago. Uh, I say a few, probably within the last uh, September 6, 2018, maybe is when she died. Um, I love the Cranberries. I absolutely love the Cranberries. Zombie, one of my favorite songs of all times. And it was actually redone by the Something Wolves. I can't remember. But their their version's amazing. And apparently she was supposed to be singing it with them. And then she died. And then they kind of went out and released it. It kind of, I don't know, memorialized her or whatever. But it's amazing. This is the problem. I thought you were going to say something, but you were just yawning. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem with this, John, is I, everybody I caught with is a singer. Th- and, that and is. We can't have a band of singers. That's not a band. Uh, I'm going to look up here. This is going to be very dark. Dead musicians. Okay. That are not lead singers. <laughs> I didn't type any of that right, so we're going to see if it actually like falls. So dead mus- dead Michael that are not lead singers. That's not right. That's not a word. Uh, Good job, musicians. John. Musicians. Good radio, everybody. I can't spell musicians. I don't know how many bees are in it. <laughs> um, here's an interesting article. Art, art, art. Man, I cannot talk. Yeah, that, maybe uh, we should just end the show here. I think this is it. That's that's a wrap, okay, everybody. I, I will, I, you know, hold on a second. I'm, this is the 50 musicians who died tragically, and you're going to tell me, should they be brought back to be in this master group? 
Oh. I'm not going to tell you much about any one of them. That's, that's rapper, good. Stop... Rapper Nipsey Hussle. No, absolutely not. Mm, that's that's too bad. Okay. David Bowie. See, once again, I'd love to bring him back. But not in this group? But we like we have to have some variety here, my friend. Okay, okay. Uh, Tupac Shakur. You know what Tupac is backwards? Kaput. I feel bad. I feel bad. Okay, are you saying no to Tupac? Uh, no. Not for, okay. the, not for this group. Notorious B.I.G. No. Jeez, you really... Whitney Houston. Also not for this group, but we could bring her back. Okay. I already said Kurt Cobain. Uh-huh. Um, Amy Winehouse. No. Okay. Prince. No. Jeez. Mac Miller. He's a rapper. Was, He's a white guy rapper. I was like, who? <laughs> okay. John Lennon, you already said yes to. Uh, Nat King Cole. No. I think Nat King Cole should be in there playing some backup trumpet. I'm pretty sure he. Yeah, but played. but, but I don't, see, wait, hold on a second. Nat King Cole might have just saying, "I don't know." So let me let me let me clarify this. If he did not play trumpet, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just for some reason think he might have also played trumpet. If it, it, once again we're limited to four people, right? I mean, sure, we can have a backup team though. We can have, like backup singers like the oh, choir. So, oh, so, oh, well then I like, this guy could be in the choir. Well then, then we or, can bring lots of people back. And, Okay, well, we got to find someone who's actually going to play some some uh, instruments here. Selena. No. Did you know? I didn't realize she died in Corpus Christi, Texas, which was very close to where I was at that moment. Oh, that's scary. Good job, John. A couple hours away. Bob Marley. You got to put Bob Marley because he can at least play guitar and stuff for the band. Yeah, that it's a weird combo, but I'm down to hear it. Okay, Elvis Presley. Once it's again. Good. Backup singer, like in the choir? No, see, no, because he's a lead singer. He's got to be right up front, like without. Could he just be like a dancer, like a uh, like a stage dancer? And then, all right, so we've got what? Like he doesn't sing, he just dances. We got Bob Marley, John Lennon, and Elvis Presley. But Elvis is dancing, right? Elvis and is... and, and, and Kurt Cobain is playing power chords. Got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. Sounds. Billy good. Holiday. No. Oh, Jesus. That's move. not very nice. Buddy Holly. No. Okay. Avicii. He's back there. Avicii's back there doing the, the sounds. He's not singing nothing. He's just back there doing the sounds, doing the doing the turntables. His, you got to put him in the background. His combination with John Lennon could be really weird. Yeah, well, and Avicii did some good stuff. So so Dolores O'Riordan is on this list. I already said I would like her. Now, here's one that's hard for me not to want to bring back because I love her. And that's Janis Joplin. Yeah, but it doesn't fit. But right. man, I would love to see her back. Okay, how about this? Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. Yes. Okay, we got Chester Bennington's back in there. Now, this, see, band, see once, once, big. once again, too many singers. We should be writing this down. Here's too, one too, too many that we sing- almost it, cannot it's... turn down, Dave. This is too many cooks in the kitchen, John. This is no, no, no. This this is going to be like an acapella group. Okay, Dave. Dave, I, I can't say no to this one. I absolutely cannot say no to this one. Okay. Freddie Mercury. Right. We can't say no. You can't say no to Freddie Mercury. No. That dude was too awesome. Did you watch the movie, the the movie about him recently? Yes. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, I saw it in theaters and watched it again at home. It was really good. It also kind of made him look like a dick. I mean, <laughs> he kind, kind of, you know, okay. was. And, Sometimes there's some truth in that story, John. Uh, did you see Rocket Man while we're talking about movies? I have not seen it yet. I keep wanting to. I think I have a copy of it somewhere, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I, I okay. watched it kind of right before we started redoing this show. I liked it quite a bit. Same director I, as Bohemian Rhapsody came in at like the last minute to fix that movie, too. So, All right. I enjoyed on Rocket guitar, Man. Mm-hmm. Dave, on guitar, not singing, on guitar, Jimi Hendrix. I thought about that. I don't like uh, I don't like Jimi Hendrix singing. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I want him playing guitar. 
Uh, Karen Carpenter of the Carpenters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. She died in 1983. Attention to brought newfound attention to eating disorder awareness. I don't know much about her. Uh, how about Easy E, the rapper Easy E? No, I don't care about Easy E. I didn't realize he died from AIDS. Okay. Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Yeah. Oh, Chris Cornell had such a cool voice, though. Once again, like, I would almost want once him again cool to be voice the lead singer of the group. Like he is almost my my choice for the lead singer of this group. Yeah, because he's got such a cool voice. Yeah, but but I want to mix. John up. Lennon's just back there, like being a hype man. Well, John, <laughs> you see, the reason Joss. I bring jo- John Joss. Lennon, John Lennon can write music. That's the reason he's here. Okay, right? so he's writing the music, but Chris Cornell is singing it along with Lincoln Park. Yeah, well, that guy's like the backup singer. Yeah, but like, he's but, a cool backup. But singer, how like a cool? Yelling backup singer. How cool would the yelling backup singer be with this? Like. No, it'd be perfect. It'd be perfect. And then you got Bob Marley just like wailing say, on the guitar, wailing on a guitar and making. No, no, like, he, he might be. He might be playing like the maracas or something like right. that. Right, sure maracas and, in his music. And making some like like you know like background like stonery kind of comments. Well, I think everyone in this group would make background stonery comments. <laughs> let's be honest here. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, Jim Morrison also playing guitar. See, we've got we've got, too many got a lot guys. of guitar players. Yeah. We do not have a drummer yet, by the way, or a bassist. No, see, this is the problem with this group, John. Uh, Leonard Cohen. I don't. We also I haven't. We also haven't name. named this group yet. Patsy Cline. We're not naming the group Patsy Cline, John. No, no. I was asking if she I, wants to be in this. She's I, not going to be in this. Okay. Do we need a fe- another female voice? We no. could put Left Eye Lopez in there. Lisa Left Eye Lopez. No, John. No. <laughs> okay. Here's another one that's kind of near and dear to me, and that is Scott Weiland. Now, I saw Scott Weiland in concert. Eight months before he died. Ooh. And he was, this was when he was sober. Like, I saw him when he was sober. He showed up like two hours late to his own concert. So it was a really long night. But it was an amazing show. Like, and I was, front, effectively, Front Row was a really small thing. And it was Scott Weiland and the Weiland Ears or whatever the heck he called his band at the time. Hmm. Man, he put on a crazy good show. And then I saw a video of him like three months later. And he was obviously back on booze and drugs. And then he died like three months later. Um, who is Christina Grimmy, former contestant on The Voice? Who, why do we care about someone from The Voice who died when she was 22? Oh, she got killed at a shooting at one of her concerts. That's not cool. That's awful. That's oh, Here we go. Here we go. I found someone we have to have. Keith Moon. He was the drummer for The Who. We have a drummer, Dave. One of the drummers from The Who. I mean, right. he was the drummer probably before they replaced him by the next drummer. Like, right. I don't think that who had more than one drummer at the time. Yeah, no, that's a really good drummer, though, then. Yeah, and I actually really like the who, to be honest with you. I love the who. Uh, George Michael? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Brian Jones, co-founder of the Rolling Stones. Now, what do we call this band, John? I think we have a full band. We got a drummer. We've got, like, no, you- six singers. Well, hold on a second. We need Jerry Garcia to play guitar. No, we don't. What? We got Hendrix. We have the entire thing of the Ramones. I think we'll be okay, Joe. Okay, Dave, give me a give me a name while I finish going through this to make sure we're not missing anyone important. Is this a band or not? Who knows? That's the name of the band. Is this a band or not? <laughs> Is this a good idea or not? Who knows? John, this has been Forget Being Cool, the podcast. For May 18th, 2020. Go, little peep. I, I'm your host, Dave Moore. That's also my co-host, co-host, Johnny Casino. We talked about this. He's just a host of the Forget Being Cool podcast. Of course, as always, if you enjoyed this show, you can support us by subscribing to the Forget Being Cool YouTube channel. Come on, people. Get us to 50 subscribers this week. Come on. You can do it. 50 subscribers. I'm asking for three subscribers. Three people. Come on. Get out there. Fine, forget being cool. It's got a cool controller, as the you know the little button to click on. Hit subscribe. It's all I'm asking. You can follow the show at Forget Being Cool. You can follow John at Johnny underscore Casino. You can follow me at Tell You Dave. And we'll see you guys on Wednesday for another episode of Forget Being Cool podcast. Super cool podcast.
never forget the day your home was invaded by Super Gobots, each sold separately from Tonka. It's the incredible. What's a Super Gobox from Tonka? Gobots. They were like the oh, uh, Gobots. The, the the not Transformers. <laughs> But the next, so I, 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 it hit me. I was like, oh shit, I don't have a commercial lined up, and I wanted one, and so uh, I, I went through and like found some. This one thing, it was like a ten minute long thing, and now I really wish I'd done the second one because it's. Well, I don't want to tell you because I'll do it next time. Uh, bye YouTube. I apologize for my one f bomb. Peace out. <laughs>